Hello and welcome back everybody, I'm on Proud Bavarian and we return here to Manor Lords to our beautiful region. In front of us we can see our manor that currently is very very sad to look at but we are about to fix that in this particular video and then in the distance we can see on the left side the German village and in the far back on the right we can see the Slavic village as well. This region has grown, I think so much has happened here, I'm so glad that we've been on this journey together because, my god, if we zoom out quite a bit, we can see just how cute everything is turning out. We're seeing this beautiful, beautiful uh, Angerdorf shape right here, and then, of course, the Rundling shape. Not just that, I have also renamed the entire region. It is now a double name, and it is called Hohenfeld Kosrich. The explanation is actually pretty straightforward. Right now, Hohenfeld is basically an archaic spelling of a real town name, called Hohenfeld, which means the high field that basically indicates that yes, you are in an elevated position. And if you look at that, that is exactly where we are. Of course, not last because of this beautiful, beautiful cliff right here. On top of that, um, I've also taken a look at this and I have renamed the original name of this particular village. See, you have to understand that I googled actual Sorbian place names, right? Sorbs are a real people and they still exist very much today in East Germany. And this particular town, or rather a town with this name, exists in real life as well. Uh, today it is called Kaseritz, which uh, was our previous spelling. I've corrected this because as far as I can see, See, Kaseritz only really became the documented spelling for this particular village or for this name of the village uh, around 1700 and that is of course far after what we are doing right here. So instead I have given it the historical, you know, accurate name. Still, to maintain this, Hohenfeld essentially refers to the fields being high up, which indeed they are, and Kozerich is Sorbian, so the Sorbs have named this after the village of the people that own goats. That is effectively what that means. So that is the final or, well, maybe temporary name, uh, depending on how much this grows. It might actually take over the entire name of this region. Uh, for example, we could name it Markt Hohenfeld, which then would mean that this particular village actually had a right to hold a market. And uh, what we can see right here, of course, yes, this is technically a market, but there is a difference between a market like this one and having an actual certified market day. But that doesn't really matter right now. More on that later. Now, what we are going to do is take a look at this right here. I have great plans today. I want to actually create a weapon manufacturer. Now, make no mistake, we kind of already are producing this. This Fletcher's shop makes it so that we will have a ton of warbows. Then right here, the joiner's shop should indeed... There you go, be creating large shields. So we are kind of already leaning into creating weaponry so that we can defend ourselves. Now, that is only the beginning, however. Uh, if we zoom out, there are two resources that we want to exploit uh, when we reach the end of this particular video, and that is this one right here, the iron deposit, so that we can start up an actual smithy, that we can start up the actual production of swords, of pikes, and so on. And then, of course, here, this clay deposit, so that we can upgrade our buildings including the wooden church right here. Technically, but don't tell anybody, listen, this is a video game. Technically, these buildings are obviously already constructed with clay, but you know what, don't worry about it, okay? Uh, you gotta do some abstractions to run these type of games. Now, outside of that, however, I also have big, big plans for this region right here. This is the country or the countryside directly under the control of our one and only Manor Lord, the fella right up here. And we gotta do something about this. I mean, this is just saddening. Look at this. This manor is barely more than a peasant's house. I would even argue it's actually less. This looks significantly worse than what we have here for the uh, level 2 houses of our farmers. You know, hey, it is what it is, but obviously we need to get above this. And we're going to do this today. Uh, I'm going to teach you a little bit of jank as well. You need to do some jank to really build the most beautiful things in this game for the manor. I will explain this as we go, but the goal is that we build an actual fortification right here. We've talked about it and now it is time to actually do the deed. This is a beautiful position, very defendable. It has indeed the King's Road in immediately underneath it and it takes a beautiful look at this valley over there that we can then administer from up here as well. So, it is time that we start designing this region. Now, you might think that the designing here effectively starts by us taking a look at the manor and then opening the castle planner. Let me be honest with you, that is indeed not the case. The jank that I talked about comes in right here. If I actually place down, for example, the walls and gates in this rough location, you can see it right here, just as a general, you know, lookout right here, that would mean that inside of these walls I could no longer build any other buildings. 
and that is pretty detrimental because it means that I can't, for example, you know, uh, build some normal houses, maybe a smithy in there just to make it look cute. That kind of stuff would be entirely impossible. And obviously, that isn't exactly what I want. So, what we are going to do instead is we're going to take a look at our surroundings. Now, I have built a granary here and a farmhouse. I'm gonna rip these out. God, I feel so sorry. We have to rebuild them elsewhere. Uh, I want the granary actually closer. And I want the farmhouse further away. The reason here is that basically I want the border of our particular manor right here to end roughly here. And they are in the way. They're slightly too close. Uh, we're gonna take care of this. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to place the farmhouse that is going to take care of these fields and some fields down there. We're going to place this farmhouse right here. Doesn't really intrude anywhere else. It's perfectly fine. Then on top of that we're going to place the granary. And let me take a look at that. I would like the granary. Sorry, the granary. It's it's just a habit. I keep saying granary, okay? I'm going to place it. And you know what? I actually gotta I gotta get rid of these roads. And I hope that I don't rip out. Oh, okay, that is perfect. We did not rip out too much of these roads right there. That is absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna rip out these roads and we're going to rebuild them in due time. I just really want to be able to build freely right now. I'm gonna build this granary. I think roughly here. It is meant to kind of stare at the manor. I think that is completely acceptable. There you go. And um, from there. We're also actually going to go, and this might seem a bit weird, don't get me wrong here, but we're going to place some burgage plots. The reason here is that I at least want some kind of living capabilities in this area. Nothing too big, nothing too fancy. I think they are not really meant to have too many, uh, you know, like farming possibilities there. This look, look at this. This is just, I think, perfect. Basically, the idea is that we get a little bit of a yard that is all around this particular manor. I'm going to place this here, mostly because this is where I would expect a hostile force to come from. This right here looks rather safe, so you know what, we're going to place these right here indeed. And I think I'm already happy with that. We're gonna, we're gonna keep it that way. Uh, we might put some more down right here. Like this, ah, at this point it's, it's a bit much though, right? No, you know what, this is just one building. I, I think we can live with this, okay? This will be one building and then we can have a little bit of a pathway going down there. That is the idea for the manor. If you don't see the vision yet, don't worry about it too much. We are going to get there. Now, the other thing, let's take a look at what might we need in this particular location. We already have, of course, the manor. We're going to get some towers there as well. We could look towards a... Uh, Maybe a storehouse, but honestly, I don't think so. Yeah, it, it doesn't really fulfill a purpose. It's not important that it fulfills a purpose, but I think even in the context of the manor, it doesn't. Now, I would like to place a smithy here, and I think I have to do this. Let me be honest with you. Right now, this lord of the manor, if he needs something smithed, he would indeed talk to the village right here. There is a smithy there. These smithies, at least in German villages, were indeed traditionally in the center of town. Um, I would like something in there just so that we have an additional building, so I'm gonna put this down. Um, let me take a look at this, right? We have these houses right there. Yeah, that is good. I'm gonna put the smithy, like, right here. I, I think this, I think that should be fine. I'm not sure that we're gonna employ anybody in this one, but hey, that's fine, okay? Don't worry about it too much. And now that we've placed this down, we are just going to fast forward. We're going to let all of these be built, and after that, we will construct the actual castle planner. So these are essentially adjacent buildings that are just there to cutify the region. And I think this should make it so that the manor seems a bit more impressive. You know, it has a couple of adjacent buildings, buildings that truly matter to the lord of the manor and so on and so forth. We might even create, you know what, I'm actually gonna do that I think, uh, just in case. We do now have these buildings of course. Oh right, and I forgot the well. Yep, completely forgot the well. This has to sadly be a bit here on the border. Uh, I would much prefer it over here. Classically speaking, wells were very close to the actual defensible center of a location, but we have to follow these routes. So you know what, we're gonna put this guy uh, maybe like right here. That should be acceptable. And after that, I'm gonna do like a teeny tiny market, uh, teeny tiny market square, maybe like right here. I don't really want much. Yeah, three store locations. So this would be clothing, it would be food, and it would be firewood, at least, you know, on a realistic point of view. So we're going to put this down. Boom. Whether this is actually being used doesn't really matter. All of this will now be built, and that means we can then build the proper manor itself, or rather, the protective sphere of the manor. Now, outside of this, I would also actually like to expand this city, uh, well, this village, at least a little bit right here. Boom. Yeah, we're going to put this down, and we're going to make sure that we go all the way to the end of the city square right here. You know what, here actually I think it would be nice if we had a little path going northwards. 
So let's, uh, you know, let's start maybe here. That should be a bit more convenient. Uh, this makes it so, and this is something that if you've been following this, then you will know this. This is very unique for this particular style of village. It's very, very easy to expand out of this particular style of village. You have uh, two entrances, one right here, one right there, of course. And then you also have these, uh, you know, essentially... Uh, off-going streets that will allow us to build further in this direction and further into this direction when it comes to additional buildings. We do not have this at all for the Rundling. The Rundling is a closed design. There's not much expansion to be expected. There's not much going on there, which makes it so that, yeah, well, this expansion is effectively over. Ooh, and we have sighted another bandit camp. Um, honestly, oh, he can have bandits in his territories. I didn't know this. We might want to take this out. I mean, it's just going to give us money. You can see right here, it's empty anyway. Uh, I think I'm going to do this as soon as I finish building the mana. We're going to do a full sweep of the map. If there's anything left at that point. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Um, Zweiau is a terrible place. It's, it's all bandits. No civilization to be seen. It's just people that steal our goods. And there they are bringing material to our newly built locations. Actually, you're taking these away. <laughs> I guess they're going to store them. Hey, listen, not my problem. The well will soon be finished. You can see that we've already finished the burgage plots right here inside of the city. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this will be really nice because, well, we are just growing and there is nothing stopping us. I really like the name Hohenfeld Kosovic. It really shows that this is a dual nature. Eventually, this village is sure to overtake this one. But for the time being, they are equals. They're working together, they're cooperating, and of course, they are under the same lord. Yeah, and they are being very, very fast right here. Look at that. The smithy is being constructed. It is going well. <sighs> I gotta finish the path here. I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna do this. I want this to not look terrible. <laughs> but basically, every building has to be attached to the road, right? Ah, and look at... Oh my god! Um, Wow, these bandits are certainly busy. Huh? They... <laughs> Jesus Christ, they are busy. Oh, and you know what? I almost forgot. I'm going to get rid of this pasture. I think eventually we're going to replace it here. At least that is how I feel about it. And when we unlock the ability right there to bake bread in our houses, so the level two artisans, I think that is when you're going to replace that pasture. But for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and actually place a communal oven right here. I might even do two right now. This is a pretty big village. Our main export is going to be bread but then again i'll be honest with you i do want to set up trade and all that it's just it doesn't really make sense to me to have two communal ovens obviously gameplay wise that makes a ton of sense but i don't think i'm going to lean into this this one will be enough we have we will have three workers working it and hopefully that will then indeed look at all that flour we have i mean my god so much flour we are expecting a ton more wheat in just under 200 days so i think this communal oven here should hopefully be able to handle it then we have two ovens one up there and of course one down in the other village that should be able to supply us. At least I hope so. God, I'm going to be honest with you. I really hope that this will actually look good. <laughs> Building the manor to look good and not just, you know, be a bit of a waste. Right now, as I said, of course, the manor doesn't have too many options. There are a couple of towers and they look nice, don't get me wrong. But, well, it is significantly different from having a lived-in fortification, which ultimately this is going to be. There were, of course, throughout history, different styles of manners. The most typical one, and I'm pretty sure this is roughly what this is oriented around, is, of course, the English manner. Um, but I'm building a bit, you know, more fortification-oriented at the very least. Let's hope that this works out. Oh, and they are finishing these before they finish the other ones, really. Ah, oh, that's, a, that's a tad confusing, but you know what, that's okay. I'm actually going to place... An additional burgage plot, like right here. Actually, now we're going to leave some space. Just make it so that there's some room to breathe. And we're going to expand this village already into the direction basically behind itself. Oh my god. Uh, enemy unit has been spotted. As I am happily building here, the bandits apparently do not agree. How many are there? Oh, bandits. Um, What are these? Like one or two units? Maybe three units? I can't see anybody else because they spawned in... Of course, this forest. All right, well, we will be ready. They spawned all the way over there where the other bandits already came from. That is why the corpse pit is here. Man, I can't wait for the bandits to actually show up in this location. I need to see archers shoot them. All right, but anyway, um, that means we have to start fighting. Now, what can we muster? I cannot currently muster the 
Oh, you can't rally them because they have under five units. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to rally these two right there. And then the retinue needs some customization. So let's talk about it and let's jump immediately into this. In this game, you can customize your retinue. You can see this guy right here. You can see this guy right there. And we can make it so that they wear specific armor that, you know, they look in a particular fashion. Take a look at this. We can change their colors and so on. And I really want to do this. Now, I already took a look at this. Honestly, blue, white. I'm not sure whether I like the color scheme there. Uh, I, I would like the other blue. You know, like a lighter blue would have been nice. But you know what? Let's go with blue, white. Sure, uh, ugh, that is a terrible color. Let's go with blue-gray, basically, I guess. I'm going to, first, before we do anything else, I'm going to give everybody here the correct color scheme so that they come marching out, you know, making us proud. All right, you can see I have done it. This retinue stands tall, but obviously they're not enough people. Now, luckily, earlier, we took in a couple of... Um, you know, just uh, taxes, and that will allow me to recruit more men at arms. Pay from your treasury to hire a retainer who already owns basic equipment. Uh, I wish, and I'm pretty sure none of this actually works. That's fine. There will be more experience. Obviously, the retinue and the ministerialis, we have them right here, in general, were mostly something that was riding. So they were horse riders. Horse riding, though, is not yet in the game, so don't worry about it too much. These are heavy. These are good units. They're going to fight for us. Obsessed with cleanliness. Oh my god. Loves animal. Animals, uh, afraid of horses, <laughs> takes bets on the outcome of battles. I like Jörg. Jörg is a great guy. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and recruit men at arms. This is actually a super interesting topic. How much money do I have here? Ooh, 8 out of 12. I'll take it. Okay. This is actually a super interesting topic. What we just did is recruiting classic men at arms. Uh, what was very common in this period, and I say this very purposely because obviously there's a long period in the Middle Ages. This game is set after 1450, roughly, something like that. And of course, the building styles are all very Franconian, but... The base idea of troops at that point is that they were largely being recruited out of Ministerialis. The question here, of course, that comes up, what the hell is a Ministerialis? Why should I care? Oh, and we can upgrade one of them. You know what? I think Jörg deserves an upgrade. I cannot abide by Jörg potentially passing away. That guy takes bets. Uh, let's give you a couple of better odds. Oh my god, look at that outfit. It is so cool. God, this is, this is such a beautiful game. Right, let's rally our troops here before we do anything else, okay? Let's bring them out. They come directly out of the manor. They all live in there, apparently. Now, obviously, that's not the case. Oh, oh, that's so weird. So, I'm pretty sure everybody that lives in the manor is supposed to be a direct servant of ours, be it administrative, be it civil, or, you know, be it, for example, on a military level. But I'm pretty sure that that is not, and I, I can't even click anymore, that that is not actually happening. I'm pretty sure that some of these folks... Oh, no, they are. Oh, yeah, they are. Actually, take a look at that. Yeah, they are archers. They're in the militia. I would have much preferred it if they were all retinue. So every man living in this particular manner here would have been a retinue. Well, anyway, let me talk a little bit about what is going on as we follow this unit to the site of the battlefield. I think we're going to once more choose this king's road right here. But all right, anyway, let's run together with our units here with our trusty, trusty retinue while we talk a little bit about what warfare looked like in this period. I mean, warfare was changing, of course, through the entirety of the medieval period very early on under Charlemagne, uh, Charlemagne, whatever you want to pronounce it, okay? So the Carolingians, we were primarily looking at everybody, literally everybody being a free man. And everybody also had the obligation to serve in the army. This is one of the driving forces, by the way, that then is established proper fiefdoms and well effectively you basically had a guy that said well technically I'm a free man but that means I have to participate in the campaigns against the Saxon and, uh, Saxons and so on and I don't want to do that so I am now going to be a vassal of this other guy that is literally how this primarily went down by the way you also have the other instances where people were pushed forcibly into serving under another lord but in general people were not eager to serve for example, most of the peasants over there, if they are not freemen, they wouldn't be serving in anything. In a militia, maybe, primarily because, well, in a militia you're looking at a situation where you just gotta defend your village. Oh, look at him, he looks so good. But in general, if you were unfree, you wouldn't be serving. Now let me just uh, make sure that everybody gets to the goal here. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna keep running over there, of course. I'm gonna order you actually in the forest. Can I hide troops? I'm not seeing a particular button i'm gonna be honest with you i'm gonna send you into this forest let's see whether we can't ambush them anyway the point being here in this period there were basically no freemen that would all have to serve this was basically a professionalism that had slowly but surely arrived in medieval warfare now in this game and this is very much oh my god 
Is that George, the dragon killer? This is, this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Wow, it totally is, isn't it? I, I love that. Okay, anyway. These people here would, of course, protect their own villages. This is a militia. It makes a lot of sense. You had it basically everywhere. But these people were very, very unlikely at this point to go into any campaigning. They would essentially just be defensive, like we're using them right now. Now, you saw this in the menu earlier, and those people are not currently in the game. Uh, there were some folks called Ministerialis, and the Ministerialis were essentially unfree noblemen. If you are thinking about the knights, if you are thinking about the knight class that goes around and is, of course, quite elegant and nice, that is them. The Ministerialis. Oh my god, you need to turn around, look into the right direction, but seriously, this is so gorgeous. The Ministerialis were unfree noblemen. This could be very restrictive. It came, of course, in different shapes and forms over time. But what you got to realize is that your average Ministerialis was not rich. He did not have a lot of freedom. And oh my god, this guy looks so cool. We need to upgrade all of these. Folks, we got to tax our population because this guy has way more swag than everybody else. Now, as we wait for the enemy to appear, there is one tidbit about the Ministerialis that I really want to bring up. Again, these are militia. They're defending their homes. They are here to defend, of course, their tiny villages. But these are professionals. These are technically all men-at-arms. But the Ministerialis, at this point in the game, was the bulk of the army. Now, the Ministerialis were essentially largely peasants. They were very, very rarely, if ever, recruited out of, for example, tradies or tradesmen or anything related to a city. Um, cities would have, of course, their own forces, but, well, when we are talking about feudal warfare, so about the warfare of the aristocracy, we are mostly talking about this unfree part of the aristocracy. And these folks were super, super interesting. So you now have this militia right over there, and you have this Ministerialis. And in the period of this game, the Ministerialis and the institution that they were symbolizing was essentially, uh, essentially already on the way down. Take a look at it. Take a gander. They are firing just over the heads of our defensive Ministerialis here. They were on the way out. And most of the money was at this point already being spent on, for example, mercenaries. Oh, they are ignoring my troops in the forest. Are they actually hiding? Oh, that is awesome. I need, to, I need to come out here so that I can attack them. Oh, there's more than one. But they also don't know. Oh, they don't know. Well, well, well. Let's keep them busy right here. And this retinue should indeed now attack them right here. Being on the way out meant that they were relatively poor. Oh, okay. Oh, they straight up just ignored them. Oh, no. Okay, I'm gonna pull you back, actually. <laughs> there we go. Shoot him. Get him out of here. We have such bad efficiency. My god, every time I'm doing this, our efficiency is truly awful. Oh, they're fleeing. Look at that. There they go. You know what? I don't even think I need to actually command this. We can watch this in person right here. Now, the point of these professional forces is that they were essentially the losers of, well, this particular period of the feudal era. Because these folks, as much as they tried, could not compete with professional forces like the mercenaries. They were being outbid. It was oftentimes cheaper. Oh, my God. They literally fled. <laughs> they looked at us and just immediately fled. Well, I mean, I guess that's the defense of our village right here. The Ministerialis and the Min at Arms were essentially the fighting force for much of the Middle Ages, but at this point, they were just cheaper alternatives like, for example, mercenaries. Um, if you wanted to wage war, you would just hire those. We can, of course, do that in-game as well. There they are, the Wayward Sons. There you go. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this is really interesting because the impact was that they either started to live in cities, they just became, for example, traders, you know, that kind of stuff, or... Well, they would become what in German is no uh, known as the Raubritter. So that essentially means people that are stealing from other people by pressing them, you know, by uh, getting street tolls, that kind of stuff, even if they didn't actually have the right to do that. Uh, and yeah, that is the future of the Ministerialis. The Holy Roman Empire, actually, when it comes to warfare in this period, also had one oddity, and that is that... The Kaiser, when he went on campaigns, more often than not, was calling on his bishops. The bishops were, of course, maintaining a large number of ministerialis, or peasants that they elevated to unfree nobility, that didn't just run their bishoprics, but also made it so that... Look at that. Yeah, I, I think this is going to turn out well. At least I hope so. But that made it so that, essentially, uh, these ministerialis would then serve the Kaiser as well. In the Holy Roman Empire, you essentially had something like battle bishops, uh, it is even said that one of the kings of England said that he was jealous of the 
German kings, for they were, uh, you know, basically in a position where their church would immediately fight for them. Now, with all of this being said, uh, we are at a point now where we are professionalizing our own army, uh, since we are going to raise uh, taxes, and I'm actually going to, oh, yep, I keep forgetting that. Uh, we are going to raise taxes here indeed. And with those taxes, we will then build a bigger and bigger retinue and long term, of course, actually be in a position where we can also hire mercenaries. We have to think bigger and a big part of that is building our own weapon manufactory so that we can cheaply equip our ret retinue. And then, of course, well, we gotta fight this guy, right? All right, but anyway, let's take a look at the manor. So, this castle planner is very specific. There are two things that if you are playing this game, you need to keep in mind. And that is A, that you can only place, for example, walls and gates wherever you have reach. And B, when you are encasing something in a wall. So, for example, this right here. You will not be able to build any other things in that particular location going forward. And I, I can't even place this. Listen, don't worry about it too much, okay? It will be impossible for you to place anything else in that location. This is super, super important. Because if you have houses in here, or if you want houses inside of your manor border, obviously this manor, I think, is more, you know, basically something that the designers thought of in the context of uh, the English manors, where they were basically just, you know, another uh, kind of aristocratic... Uh, living location somewhere in the countryside. I want to use it more as a fortification if you want to do this as well, but you want some inside stuff going on, uh, going on like these houses. <clears throat> Pardon me, my voice died there for a second. Make sure to place those houses before the walls come in. All right, anyway, um, with that being said, and I, I gotta opt out of this just for one second here. Let's place down this path right there. This should be completely fine. And then I'm going to redraw this particular path. We're gonna, we're gonna start, I think, right here. I don't want it to be too steep. This looks fine, I think. This, I, I think this should be fine. This will go immediately in here. Boom, there you go. Because what we can do now is, yep, you connect them like this. There you go. Beautiful. What we're doing here is we are prepping this in a fashion where, and you know what? I actually want an extra exit. Now that I think about it, I want the eventual exit into this direction. I want it roughly here. I, I think this is is where we are mentally here. We're going to put this in there. That is why I left this particular, uh, you know, breach in there, basically. And then we're going to just do this. Boom, there you go. We can do more paths, of course. That is not the big problem there. And now I'm going to open the castle planner. And we're going to be a bit cheeky here. Like I said, uh, if you're building this yourself, be cheeky. You got to go into the jank. Don't be confused. Don't think, oh, well, this isn't working as designed. Doesn't matter. I'm placing down these towers, okay? <laughs> Entirely, because this will allow me to place walls right here. And that is essentially half the work done already. With these walls being able to now be placed in this location. And you know what? I want to push this a bit further to the cliff. We want don't want to be too close, but I think this is where the big tower will go. With these walls now being placeable here, we're going to go ahead and indeed do just that. Let me take a look at the cliff here. I think I'm going to ignore... You know, you see this this uh, elevation line right there? I don't want to screw around too much with this. Let's do it like this. Yes, okay. There you go. And all of a sudden, this might be... I don't like the way the back looks. You know what? I, I don't like the way the back looks at all. What we're going to do is we're going to cut in here. We're going to make it less cornery <laughs> in just a bit and then I think yes look at that that is I like that that is why I moved the granary that is why I moved of course the farmhouse this just makes it so that there's nothing in the way which means nothing can burn down and then in fact this well it's not really a, it's not really a wall right it's it's basically just a fence but anyway that is the point right here oh that is not what I had in mind okay there you go Constructed, boom, there you go. And now that we have done this, I can actually go ahead and, yep, look at that. I can remove these towers. I exclusively placed them so that I could be very, very freely placing this particular wall. I actually like the way this wall looks. I mean, okay, you gotta forgive him for this. Don't worry about it too much. This fence looks completely fine. We have some inner life going on here. Quite the rich existence, uh, you know, if I do say so myself. Right, after this, we have a big, big garrison tower. And I want this big, big garrison tower, I think, right here. Let's take a look at this, right? If we, if we put it right there, we might want to put it right here to have some more visibility down the King's Road. Can I place more than one here? Oh, I totally can! Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this guy away again. And I think we're gonna place one, one more roughly there. I, I think that is where we want this. What does this look like from a distance? 
Oh, look at that. I, I think we're getting somewhere here. I think this has potential. We got some end on purpose distance as well between the fence and these houses. You know, makes it so that if the houses are burning, the fence won't burn and vice versa. And then we're going to just give in to some natural smaller towers right there. I think that should work. I'm, I'm going to be honestly pretty extensively placing these um, entirely because why wouldn't I, right? This is essentially where we would expect some attacks maybe to come in, you know. We need some... Oh my god, this is it. <laughs> that is a tall tower right there. I think those are essentially needed. <sighs> if I place another one, it might be a bit too much, no? I don't know. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to save this one for the time being. But I think no, you know what? I'm going to place it. Screw it. We're going to we're going to do it. Okay, we're crazy like that. We 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 just are kind of crazy. And then I'm going to place some tax offices down and like I said, there is going to be a lot of jank. One part of the jank journey here is going to be this right there. I think I can You know what? I'm going to move both of these actually. Um I'm going to move No, you know what? This is actually fine. I'm going to move you just more inwards. There you go. Look at that. Okay, well no, actually, uh, don't look at this part, okay? It's jank. <laughs> We're going to use another tax office asset and place it uh, maybe right here. Relatively close to the smithy. There you go. I think that looks fine. It's a bit on its own, but honestly, we're just coming into it. Ah, oh, there's such a wide open space here. I think I'm going to place just a couple more houses here, right? Now, I can't currently build this because we don't have all the requirements, but that's fine. I will pause, and then if we go here yet again, you can see it has saved all of this. So the jank is happening. Now, before I finalize this, um, let me take a look at this, right? I think having some room here in the back is fine. I don't want to spend... Oh, and that is... Nope, I don't want to do too many tax offices just because it is a very repeating asset. We could be doing a trading post um, just so that we see some traffic going into this direction. You know what? I'm gonna place this. Uh, let's double check that this doesn't change what things look like. Are you are you looking good? Oh yeah, look at that. That's beautiful. So we're gonna have a trading post um, relatively close to the manor, and I think that is about it already. Okay, now we just need to wait for more timber. Wonderful. All right, now let's think about trade, right? Um, hmm. We're not really producing any wooden parts right now. Do I want to sell any of these in in this category? We might be selling some leather. Honestly, now that I think about this, oh, we would have to open a route though. Uh, we don't have to open a route for this, and honestly, we have so many planks. Let's export this. Let's say our desired surplus here. Let's put a desired surplus here, maybe at 120. And I don't think. Do I need to establish a trade route? After paying to establish a dedicated traveling merchant. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know what? I will want to see a dedicated traveling merchant just because it will look nicer. Nothing wrong with that at all. Are we exporting anything else yet? Do I want to export anything else yet? We could do some commodities. Obviously, we are going to export tools, but we don't currently have the money for this. I would love to export the ale, but yeah, there is a route required. No, we're just, just going to go ahead. We're just going to leave it like this. I will employ three people in this trading post permanently. They just live there now because, again, I can't edit these after we actually build the manor. Now, all we're going to do is wait for the timber to come in and we should be golden. But you know what? Let me actually complete the pathways here, I think. There you go. Um, that is a nice thick road. You're also going to continue from here. Boom. You love to see it. And then obviously that will lead directly into the housing plots right there. We could even do more, but I'm going to keep it the way it is. I don't really want to build these up into trade houses either. I think they're fine the way they are with the burgage plots in their current position. What is this? Stocks damaged by weather? Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it too much. We are now at a point where our food is slowly but surely not all too much, but I think we'll be fine. It just, basically, it just takes the people here in this communal oven to get going. Uh, at the very start, you can see we are producing bread. Everything should be fine. This means, even after I have placed all of them in a position where I can't edit them anymore, these people will keep working. We have a smithy here, just so there'll be some activity in it, right? Then we have a trading post and we have the granary, all of which will be worked properly. I am very, very happy to see that. And I'm actually going to upgrade you just so that I can employ you in the trading post as well. Again, we are currently just waiting for more and more timber. I might honestly even just import that. We'll, we'll see. Oh, and isn't that beautiful? The flax is now being planted right here. The fields are really lighting up in gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Now, we are only just starting up the 
you know, actual weaver qualities of our villages here as well. But I think we are definitely going to get there. Um, my hope is that long term, maybe I'll get rid of some of these trees here. I would like to see the manor from here. It is basically a statement of power, right? I want to make a statement. We control these lands and we are going to take away your rights. Uh, don't worry about it. You will become a serfdom and you will like it. I hope uh, that I can actually get the weaver economy going as well, but it's not the focus, of course, of this video. We're going to finish the manor first and then take a gander at what else to do. Yeah, look at that. Look at how fast they are working now. That is a beauty to behold. They are really capable of bringing these logs where they are needed in record speed. Um, I haven't actually, and I'm going to do this... Ah, it pains me to use this timber, but I am going to go and actually place down... Uh, where is it? There it is. We're going to place a mining pit right here. I'm going to uproot some trees for that. This is, of course, what we have on uh, with clay. There's not too much here, but it is better than nothing. And honestly, this isn't even that far away from our actual settlement location right there. So I think, yeah, our paths here are fine. I might found, ultimately, at some point, a teeny tiny village over here, just so that we have a local worker for the clay deposit. But for the time being... Let's place this, and I would like to have the clay furnace nearby. Clay furnaces, yep. And I think we are now at a point we might want to upgrade this church. It doesn't even cost us too much timber. I'm still waiting for the timber to fill up, but yeah, we're going to upgrade this to the very first small stone church here in the region. This church will, of course, make everybody here very, very happy. And as we go and upgrade more and more houses, yeah, that will only really have more and more upside. Speaking of which, by the way, now that we are earning a little bit more money as we go, I'm going to establish more farms. Uh, we talked about this in the past already. There was, and this is still a village, don't get it wrong, but there was still a lot of garden agriculture being done, even in medieval cities. So, you know, these folks here, for example, having chicken, them having vegetable gardens, that stuff is very much accurate. And I am actually going to be a bit cheeky here. We're going to place this logging camp right here so that we can clear this out so that I can then place down, you know, at least like, it's not really a village, but just an individual settlement of maybe two, three, maybe four houses, so that we can make this into, you know, first an industry standpoint, and then later on maybe a trade settlement. I think that should be fine. And there it is, slowly being built. Over the winter here, it seems, we are looking at uh, the very first proper church that will withstand the test of time without a doubt. This is actually a, an incredibly... Uh, important testament in the sense that this is uh, basically a real Franconian church as it exists in real life. Now, don't worry, by the way, it looks like we are running out of food, but we're not really. We have a lot of flour. We're going to work this grain that still remains into flour as well and then going to bake more and more bread. Uh, I'm really not concerned about that stuff. I think for the time being, we might be running low, but we'll be okay. For the time being, this church will be the tallest building in the entire game. And I mean, if you compare it to the surrounding particular living quarters here, then yeah, obviously, this is a pretty, pretty big building. Uh, we are waiting for some roof tiles, and after that, they can finish this church. I actually had to, by the way, place additional logging camps just to make sure that we harvest enough. I think they basically don't harvest more than what they can store, uh, and it seems as though these storehouses don't really care to, you know, pick that stuff up. Uh, I did actually turn off these saw pits, but yeah, that didn't really have the desired effect. So now that we have more and more... <laughs> now that we have more of this, I think uh, we will be fine. I just had to build up more of the logging camps. Yeah, this is a... It's a it's a very expensive undertaking. But you know what was also a very expensive undertaking? This church right here. And just look how it turned out. Man, we gotta gift the other village the very same church. I think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And like I said very much a historical building right here absolutely gorgeous oh and look at that a fire broke out oh my god rubble on fire well i'll be honest with you um we're not really in a position where i know where fire risk is entirely because that map mode doesn't work ah uh, look at that wow our town is on fire they're throwing the water we have a well very very nearby but indeed, this house is gone. Now, luckily, it wasn't a very important one. We invested just a tiny amount of money there. We'll live. Oh, and luckily, I mean, first of all, they're still throwing water on it. But I think they're just immediately rebuilding it. That's nice. Nothing wrong with that at all. That, that is quite nice indeed. Okay, folks, this took longer than I would have liked to. Mostly because I needed to micro a little bit, you know, where we are producing what, just what our leftover stuff is. 
But I think it is time. I placed down another tavern right here so that it doesn't look that empty. I think we're getting something okay here. Oh my god, I pray that we're getting something okay here. Maybe it's a bit overkill, but you know what? Let's see how this mana comes out. Oh, and we are so close to finishing our fortification. Trust me, it took ages because of all the jank that I'm employing. But I think we can test our metal here very, very soon. I'm positive, though. I think we're going to beat them very, very easily. I hope that they're going to go along the cliffs, but we'll see, okay? We will figure it out. Whew. And folks, here we are. This is the first fortification of this region. It will also be the only one because, again, there is no castle building. I have abused the system considerably. Make no mistake. You're not meant to build a manor like this, but basically, I have built a location where our manor lord has some immediate servants, where he has plenty of buildings, he has good defensive towers, and he has a great overview over the region. I think, honestly, I'm quite happy with this. Obviously, not what the game intended there, but I will gladly take it if it means that we can enjoy something like this. I really like the look of this as well, right? As you come from our main village, you see it right here, and that is, I mean, that is a good look. Maybe too many towers over there, huh? But anyway, yeah, this is quite a decent look. It was also a huge pain. Just for the record, I mean, my god, I had to micro so many production uh, elements of this. I had to prepare so much here and then make sure that, well, we were basically starving. Oh, I can't pass through this. We were basically starving the entire time. Well, not starving exactly, but low on food because I had so many people just building up this location. But in the end, I mean, look at this. This is just the very first level of fortification. Ideally, of course, we would continue from here on out. But I mean, yeah, this is honestly, I like it. You let me know what you think about it, though. Obviously, this may or may not be, you know, something that you also had in mind right here. I am quite content taking a look at this. Like I said, and oh no, I'm noticing this just now. The tax collector is bugged. Ah, oh, folks, don't look at it. <laughs> ah, that is terrible. But hey, it looks good from a distance. Ah, uh, there you go. Let's take a look at it in the look of the region. Yeah, no, I like this. We have a light fortification right there. Surrounded by the two villages. You can see the difference as well. Take a look at this church right here and then take a look at that church over there. That is a lot more impressive. And folks, sadly, we are not awaiting them from the position of our fortification, but we're pretty damn close. Our archers, you can see, are already taking aim, shooting them here in the bushes. I honestly don't think they're going to be a threat here. I am obviously looking forward to actually having our retinue grow bigger and bigger. <laughs> but these archers are definitely doing a number on the bandits right here. Yeah, uh, I haven't even started in this video the production of everything related to, you know, metal. So basically weaponry and such. But I think the archers are doing a splendid job as is. And now, folks, I called them in a bit too late. But take a look at that. The retinue is going to come in. Oh, they instantly wiped them. Yeah, bandits here do not have the energy. Look at that. Bandits do not have the energy to oppose us. Jesus Christ. These archers, powerful. And more powerful, of course, with the aid of this fortification. But listen, folks, I'm going to end it here today. I would have loved to start the weapon production, but my god, actually creating this fort took so much longer. Uh, this fort, again, like I said, not intended gameplay-wise. The mana system is not yet really adequately equipped to build any fortifications. I've done my best, and I think we've got to leave it right there. Um... Yeah, I try to create essentially what is a very, very early castle town, right? You can see the light production. You have the serfs directly living behind the walls so that we can protect ourselves. At the end of the day, once we zoom in, we can see it's just a fence. But okay, <laughs> what we have right here is the light first fortification of our manor lord. And I'm a big fan. I hope so are you. I'll leave it right here and I'll see you later, alligator.